Okay, so today we're going to cover chapter 8, section 4, and we're going to learn some more proportionality theorems. So the first one is called the triangle proportionality theorem. And what this theorem states is that if a line parallel to one side of the triangle intersects the other two sides, then it divides the two sides proportionally. So in this picture, you'll be told that EB is parallel to CD or DC, which is what is put right here. And then it's dividing this side of the triangle as well as this side of the triangle proportionally. Now, the setup for the proportion that I like to do is what they've done here. So notice both numerators are coming from the top portion. So AB here and AE, it's coming from this top piece and this top piece. So these are tops of the picture or the triangle. And then the bottom of the fractions, these are coming from these two segments that are in the bottoms. So this is a setup of showing top over bottom. Now, technically, what we can also do here is do the bottom piece over the top piece. So we could also set up our proportion and say that it's, um, and it doesn't have to be the right over left on the proportions because I'm not looking for a scale factor. So you could also do ED over AE, flip it, and then also show the other side, the BC over the AB. Now, one thing to remember is, let me go ahead and pull this, um, redraw this triangle here. Now, at the beginning of the chapter, we learned some shortcuts to prove that two triangles are similar. So remember, if you have that these two sides or these two segments are parallel, remember that creates, if I use these as parallels and then use this as a transversal, remember that makes congruent corresponding angles here. And then the same thing, if I use this side as a transversal, then I have congruent corresponding angles here. So remember, that would have made this top little one, the AEB, similar to the whole big one by using angle angle. Because I had this angle congruent here, and then here, and then of course the obvious A congruent to itself. So when you're doing this homework, if you blank out and you don't recognize the proportionality theorem, you can also use your prior knowledge and use that the fact that these are similar triangles by angle angle, and then just match the corresponding sides in your proportion. So you can use your prior knowledge to answer some of the homework questions. You don't necessarily need to use the proportion theorems that I'm teaching you here for some of the questions. Now, you can also set up your proportion, instead of doing top over bottom or bottom over top, you can also do right over left or left over right. You could also go side to side if you wanted. So for example, I could go across and I could put AE over AB and then the bottom ED over BC. You just have to find what's going to work best for you. Honestly, I think setting up your proportion as top over bottom makes more sense logically, but it's up to you. Just make sure that you're setting it up based off of the fact that they're similar triangles. So what this one would have been is the left top over the left, I mean, over the right. So this one would have been the right top. So left over right, and the two pop pe top pieces, and this would have been left bottom over right bottom. You can set it up that way as well. And that's what this means. 
The next slide has the converse. And remember, that's where we switch the order of the triangle proportionality theorem. This time, they'll start out by giving you the proportion, and you're going to show that the lines are parallel. So if a line divides two sides of a triangle proportionally, then it's parallel to the third side. And you're going to do homework questions like this, and they're going to ask you to prove that the lines are parallel. You need to show me that the sides are proportional. And this proportion that's given to you, notice again, it's top over bottom. So the AB is this piece over the BC, the bottom, so top over bottom, and then this top over this bottom piece. And that seems to make the most sense. Now, even if it's laying on its side, you can still do the top over the bottom. You can, again, remember, do side to side if you'd rather. So you could also do AE over AB, so going sideways, and then ED over BC. Either way, because if you notice on these diagonals, this is exactly the same thing, but it's just over here in these spots. And then same thing on this diagonal, you're still just multiplying the same thing. So just stay consistent. Find um, a setup that's going to work for you. So notice that they've started out what they want you to put into the proportion. So this is why I want to show you you have options just in case you get a question like this where it starts out for you. Maybe you're always doing top over bottom, but then now, now they're doing bottom over top. Because you notice here, the CD is at the bottom of the picture over the top piece. So then you have to match the other side the same way. Put the bottom, CE, over the top. So if they start it out for you, then you got to match it. But if it's up to you, you can do it in reverse. You can do top over bottom. Let's try part B. I'm going to go ahead and label my picture with what is given. So what was given to me is CD is 3. DA is six, and they're giving me DE, which is 3.5, and then they're giving, they want me to find AB. So for this one, we can't use that proportionality theorem. We have to use our prior knowledge and recognize that this little triangle here is similar to the whole big one because the parallel lines make congruent angles. So by angle, angle, the blue and the purple one are congruent or similar. So if I redraw the blue one, the EDC, this is 3.5, this is three, and then the purple one, the big one, BAC. And on this one, what I can do is find the length of AC here by adding six plus three and it's nine, and I don't know AB. And this is what they're asking me to try to find. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my proportion. So this is for part B. So for this one, I'm using my prior knowledge and match the corresponding sides. So I can see that this side right here, the nine is gonna be proportional to the three. So I could go ahead and put that into a ratio. And you could either do three over nine or nine over three. It doesn't matter because we're not looking for a scale factor. I'm gonna reduce that. And then I'm gonna match the other sides. So this side here, ED, is gonna match with AB. So I'm gonna use the one third and set that equal to the 3.5 over X. I set up my numbers from left to right, if you wanted to do it nine over three, simplify it three to one, then you would have done X over 3.5. Either way, and then cross multiply one times X, three times 3.5 is 
So the length of AB is 10.5. And this is using our prior knowledge. Now for C, we could use the new proportion that we just found. Let me go ahead and redraw this. Since I've written all over it. So now this time, they're giving me CB, which is the whole thing here. And they told me it's 12. Then they gave me EB, which is eight. They gave me CD, which is six. And they want me to find DA. So I'm gonna use my new proportion and I'm gonna to do top over bottom. What I'm gonna fill in is gonna be BE over EC, and I'm gonna set that equal to the AD, or actually DA, because that's the way that they wrote it, DA over DC. Now notice we don't have EC, but I could find it because I was told the whole thing here is 12, and if this little piece right here is eight, I could do 12 minus eight, and I know that this little piece is gonna be four. So I could do eight over four is equal to X over six. Now, you're using a calculator, so you could just leave it, or you could simplify it. So if I just leave it, I get four times X, eight times six, divide, and x equals 12. If you weren't using a calculator, I would definitely simplify the eight over four and make this two over one, and then set it equal to the x over six, and then it goes right to the answer. But either way, um, you can solve it either way. You are using calculators. So again, you don't have to worry about simplifying it. So DA is 12. The next theorem is called the three parallel lines theorem. And it states that if three parallel lines intersect two transversals, then they divide the transversals proportionally. Okay, so for here, they're again, they're setting it up. These are coming from the top portion here. That's where these two are coming from. And then the denominators are coming from the bottom piece. So again, it makes sense, top over bottom. You can also do it bottom over top. You can also do it left over right. You could also set it up with AF over the right piece BC and then EF over CD or flip it either way. So bottom to top, top to bottom, left to right, right to left. Just find a way that's gonna be the easiest for you to remember how to set up these proportions and just stay consistent. So let's try an example using this new theorem. Okay, so here's our example. Notice the arrows on the lines indicating that these are three parallel lines. And remember, it's going to split these transversals on the sides proportionally. So for part A, I'm gonna go ahead and answer this one in red, and I'm gonna add the numbers to my picture. So A equals two, B equals three, C equals five, and they want me to find D. So I'm gonna set up my proportion top over bottom. So I'm gonna do two over three, is equal to five over X. I'm gonna cross multiply and divide by two and X equals seven and a half or 7.5. For the next one, I'll go ahead and do this one in purple. Again, I'm gonna add in I'm not gonna erase the red, I'll leave it there. I'm just gonna rename A, B, C, and D here. A is four now, B is eight, C is still five, and I wanna find this time C plus D. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve this the exact same way, 
and I can find D and then just go back and add it. So let's go ahead and set it up. Again, I'm gonna do top over bottom. So I'm gonna do four over eight is equal to five over D. I'm gonna find D first, then I'm gonna go back and add it to the C to get the answer. And again, if you want to simplify the four over eight, you can do that. You don't have to. So this becomes 4D equals 40, if you don't simplify, and then divide both sides by four, D equals 10. But if you did simplify, notice it goes right to the answer. So now to get the answer, C plus D, remember C was five, I just found D to be 10, so C plus D equals 15. The last theorem is called the triangle angle bisector theorem. And this one states that if a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, then it divides the opposite side into two segments whose lengths are proportional to the lengths of the other two sides. So the ray is in red, and it's splitting this side AB here into proportional segments. And then you would set those. So what they've done here is they've taken this side AB that it splits it, and they put AD here, DB here. And then the other fraction or the other ratio for the one that's across from the AD is the side of the triangle that it's part of. So like if you think of this as being a triangle here that the ray has split, and then this one, and then the DB would go with the CB. Another way that you could set up your proportion, instead of taking the AB that was split into two um, proportional sides, you could also set it up with AD with the AC, in the same fraction. So like think of this as the sides of the blue one, and then you could put the purple one, and you could put the DB with the BC. Either way, it works. You can flip it, um, doesn't matter. So this, is, this one that's given to you is that side that was split is in the same fraction, and then the sides of the triangle in the same fraction. Okay, so for the last one, we're gonna use this last theorem that we just learned, but notice what they're asking us to find is this X, which is the length of the whole side. But our theorem that we just learned talked about this ray here that bisects this angle, splitting this piece and this piece proportionally. So what I'm gonna do so I can use that new theorem is I'm gonna put a letter Y here. I'm gonna find that little piece first, and then I'm gonna go back and add it to the 10. So I'm gonna set it up where I take the side that was split and put the 10 over Y, and then put the other two sides of the triangle in the other fraction. So I could set it up with the 12 over 24, now again, you could simplify the 12 over 24 and make it one half. Or again, you're using a calculator, so we could just cross multiply and divide the way it is. So 12y equals 240, divide, and y equals 20. Now if I did the other proportion, it goes right to the answer. So now this tells me that this little piece is 20. So now to find x, all I have to do is add 10 and 20, and the value of x is 30. So x equals 30.